Hey, welcome back everybody. I hope you're all doing somewhat okay. So I'm gonna throw you a little bit of a curveball on this one. This is an iPhone that was sent here because it will not turn on. This is an iPhone SE that went into a repair shop for a back glass replacement. And after replacing the back glass, this thing does nothing at all. And I'm gonna find out here today if the technician that worked on this is at fault or if this was just a spontaneous failure. I'm putting the blue gloves on just in case there's any like uh, poo poo or anything inside there. So the first thing I'm gonna do even before opening it is connect it to a charger. And there you can see, it looks a lot like we have a main short. We are just getting a blip, 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 blippity blip, 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 and nothing is happening. We just get these little blip, 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 blip spikes. I'm really thinking that the technician that replaced the back glass on this is most likely not responsible, but I'm gonna pop it open and see what it looks like. Here we are looking inside this phone. There was no penelope screws in the bottom of it and it came apart very easily. I don't know about you all, but I'm starting to think that this looks a lot like an iPhone 8. Let's go ahead and get the battery disconnected, which was very easy. Ooh, look here, the battery is already loose. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way so we don't have any spontaneous fires. So I really don't see anything too terribly bad inside of the phone, but with the symptoms, I'm reasonably certain that we are going to have a main short. All right, so to verify this short, I don't actually have a working iPhone 11 probe. Mine always seem to catch on fire. So I'm going to just grab us a ground clamp here for ease of access. I'm going to just clamp that on right there. And then I'm gonna take my positive lead right here and I'm gonna set the power supply on four volts and just shimmy right on over here to the battery connector. We're just gonna to touch it. Let's see what we get here. Battery connector connection in one, two, three. Connect. Okay, we get an instant 3.2 amps of current. Now, what that means to me is that this board has a short somewhere on a main power line. It's most likely not gonna be on the battery rail, but on VCC main. And we can verify that if we just take a multimeter and we can set it to ohms mode or diode mode. I'm gonna go ahead and use mine in diode mode because I like diode mode. And I'm gonna put my red probe on ground, use my black probe to do the probing, and we get a 0.42 which is not a short to ground that means our short is somewhere else so if we look at the back side of this board and we look at the vdd main power line you can see that we have just stuff all over the place that this could be and the phone doesn't smell burnt is there any vcc mains that we can get to on the top side of the board that would make this really easy and also, should I check it before I take the board out of the phone? All right, let's get in on this test point right here. TP0701, <laughs> it says TP. So right here next to that connector, the one that is right in front of the connector is TP0701. So I'm gonna do the same thing, red probe on ground. I'm gonna use my black probe to do the probing. And we should get something a little closer to a 0, 0.00 on this test point. I get a 0, 0.000, which is a absolute dead short to ground. This is most likely gonna be on the bottom of the board. We have one other place here, actually a couple other places right next to the connector. It could be any of these caps, like right next to all these image filters. So looking at that area under the microscope, I'm gonna say our odds of this being a topside problem are really next to nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the board out of this phone and let's see what we find underneath. Alrighty then, here I've got the board out of this and I'm not seeing anything too terribly crazy. You know, I do notice that all of the stickers have done been removed here and that's pretty much okay. That's most likely somebody uh, trying very hard to not have to mail this thing off. So what in the world could have happened to cause us to wind up with a short. I'm not seeing any dents in the, in the sticker on the back of here. No dents over here. Everything here actually looks pretty good. So virtually nothing visibly wrong with this board. And then looking inside of the housing, when it comes to back glass replacements, it's really common to have dents and dings all over this metal backing but we don't even have any of that. So it really looks like our little main short problem is most likely not caused by the technician that worked on this phone, but is more likely caused by the original bang that 
shattered the back glass to begin with. So I really should go ahead and check and make sure we do still have a main short after the board is removed. So let me put this thing under a microscope and just go ahead and give it a little probing. I'm gonna set again my meter in diode mode. And I'm just gonna go directly back after that same test point. So red probe on ground, black probe to do the probing, and we are getting a 0, 0.00, so it is absolutely positively a short to ground on the logic board and not something else inside the housing. So the fastest way for me to figure this out is going to be to use a thermal camera. I would like to try to only remove what is absolutely necessary here. It's possible that the short is going to be up here under the CPU shield, which is going to require me to unsolder the shield. It's also possible that the short is going to be under one of these two stickers here, which will require the sticker to be removed. So what I'm gonna to try to do is narrow this down. That way I only have to dissect this board in the exact location where the short is, and I don't wind up doing a whole bunch of extra work. I'm gonna be taking my little jumper wire here. You know, we've got this big old hunk of cable. And then if we look at ZXW tool here on the back side of the board, we can see that all of these caps here, these are all on VDD main. So I'm just going to pick us out one or two or maybe a couple of these things to solder us a jumper onto here. Just going to take us some nice solder. Stick that wire on there and there. That'll work. We have us a nice, beautiful solder joint. I mean, who can complain about that? That is practically perfect. So to do this little short detection, we are going to need a ground. I'm gonna hook our ground up right there on the corner of the board, just like that. And then I'm gonna take our positive lead and I'm gonna hook that right up to the other end of our big old fat jumper wire. So here we are looking at this board with a thermal camera. There's my nice hot finger. And now we're gonna turn the power supply on in one, two, three. We're definitely gonna notice that our big old jumper cable up here gets hot because that's where the current is going in. But is there anything else on this board that's gonna jump out at us? So far, no, not really. Possibly right along NAND, but I don't know of anything else there that would give us any, I mean, I don't think there's any other main stuff there. Let me just try to adjust this in and get our jumper wire out of the view. Let's look at just the bottom of the board first. Okay, here we go. Power supply on. I'm really just not seeing much in the way of a, a thermal signature here, which means that the short on this board is a very firm short. It's not one that, you know, it, this is a really, really nice short. Now I'm gonna switch my power supply over to parallel mode. Now that's gonna set this thing up. Now we're putting out four volts at six amps. Let's see what that does to our thermal signature. I'm gonna to try to have a look at the board without that jumper at the top showing, although at six amps we might actually melt it in half. All right, let's turn the power supply on. Normally, thermal imaging is a really quick way to narrow this stuff down. You know, just out of curiosity, I wanna see how hot that wire's getting at six amps through that little wire. So here we go. Ooh, that's hot. All right, turn that back off before it melts our solder. Uh, hmm. Well then, let's flip the board over and have a look at the other side then, shall we? So now, having a look at the top side of the board, let's see what we get. What in the world is going on with this board? Wait, I didn't solder to ground, did I? Why do I always do this? So I've actually soldered our jumper wire directly to ground, which means I'm an idiot. I actually soldered that directly to ground. So let's put that on the other side of those caps where we may be able to find the short. There you go, some on right there. A little bit more right there. Oh, that is just gorgeous. That is the most beautiful solder joint in the world. So now we've got the test probe soldered in the correct location, and I'm going to turn the power supply on in one, two, three, on. And what are we getting here? More heat up 
top? It's going to be one of these top capacitors right here, isn't it? Let's just have a look at that once more. Huh? No, that's just my test lead getting hot. So the short on here is actually right here by the Wi-Fi IC. Let's get you in there and look at that just a little bit closer. So looking right here next to the Wi-Fi IC, I'm going to turn the power supply on and one, two, three. On. Boom, 98.7 degrees, 100 degrees. This board actually has a short right next to the Wi-Fi IC. If we look at that area on ZXW tool, you can see that there are several capacitors that it can be. Now having a look at that under the microscope, the problem is quite a bit more obvious. That is a smushed up, smashed up. You know, capacitors that just spontaneously short, they typically still look somewhat okay, but they'll just have one little crack through them. This capacitor here, it seems to have a bit of a chunk missing out of it. Like maybe it was hit with a tool or I don't know, could this be laser damage? If you are doing back glass on these and you know a lot more about this and you've you know seen this type of thing on this exact model, please let me know what you think in the comments below. If we look at that area, yeah, if we look at that area in the housing, it does look like there's been some shenanigans coming through from the back side. So, boy, early on in this video, I said that I didn't think that this was going to be caused by the technician, but I believe this was actually caused by the technician. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the short. So to begin that, I'm going to go ahead and remove my jumper wire because we no longer need the jumper wire. We'll just pop that off of the correct side. All right, hit that with some alcohol and clean my flux up. So that's got those capacitors cleaned up pretty much as well as I'm gonna get them. And now it is time to give our troubled capacitor here a nice proper removal. Let's see if this little cap is gonna cooperate with us. Yeah, it definitely looks like it has been stabbed around on. It's got, you know, some pieces here missing. Um, caps that just short spontaneously, they'll just have a little crack through the middle of them somewhere. So let's just carve this out of here a little bit. And I'm going to be doing this without any heat because I don't feel like turning on the heat. Um, so nice proper removal. We'll just put the blade in right next to it and pop that off the board. There we are. And now the first thing that we can do, if you all would like, we can test that little capacitor and find out whether or not it's going to say that we're shorted. So I will put the meter in beep mode. Meters in beep mode. And here's the crummy little capacitor under the microscope. And I'm just going to touch it. Give it a little toucheroo. She's dead, Jim. Time of death, 10.54 a.m. So just to go a little bit farther, I'm going to go ahead and test this board in diode mode right down here on VCC main, right about here. Put my red probe on ground and put my black probe on VDD main. And we are now getting a 0 0.32, 0 0.38, depending on how I hold my probes. And that is a completely acceptable reading. This short is now gone and this board will be able to boot. I know what you're all thinking. Is he going to replace the capacitor or is he going to leave the capacitor off the board? If I don't replace this capacitor, there is going to be at least seven people. No, wait. Five people that ask me why I didn't replace the capacitor and will tell me that that capacitor was there for a reason. If it wasn't needed to be there, then why would Apple had put it on the board? So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to leave it up to your imagination let me know what you think in the comments below. Did I replace that capacitor or did I not? Okay, I've got this phone all the way reassembled back up to the way it was whenever it first came in and I'm going to connect a charger. We are now getting 0 0.6, 0 0.8. We are pretty much drawing one amp of charging current and we have Apple logo. All right, this phone is back up and running. We are at a lock screen. Do we have working touch? We do. We have got normal charging current and it is going to be good to go. I do believe that this was either caused by a tool slip or I'm not sure if they use a laser on this. 
I don't think they used a laser. Laser back glass removal typically, in my experience, causes the phones to smell burnt. And um, there you have it. Another working iPhone that was otherwise sent here dead, and I am ready to move on. So if you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me to keep going, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching.